Today's video is going to be a special one, because I am going to be comparing literally every single MacBook Air out there, including the latest M4 MacBook Air, last year's M3 MacBook Air, the one with the M2 chip before it, and even the almost 5-year-old M1 MacBook Air. I was actually planning to rule out the M1 Air this time, but turns out, you can still buy one of these. Not refurbished, not open box, but fresh new M1 MacBook Airs. It's, a uh, 8256 of a gigabyte model is selling for as low as $649 in the US, or around 60,000 rupees in India. The M2 MacBook Air is a little more expensive at $799, or 80,000 rupees, while the M3 Air costs an additional $100. Although, I should tell you that the M2 and M3 models now ship with 16GB memory instead of just 8GB. The new M4 Air is definitely the costliest of them all, retailing at $999, or some 1 lakh rupees in India. So, if you are planning on getting a MacBook Air right now, which one's actually the best for you? Don't worry, I'm here to help because for the past two weeks my team and i have been working really hard on testing all four of them across pretty much everything you can imagine so you can get the right macbook air that's perfect for you okay so let's start with the biggest and the most recognizable differences between these four devices which is their performance and I don't think I need to remind everyone just how revolutionary the M1 chip was for Apple back in 2020. The jump from Intel's x86 system to a much, much more efficient ARM-based system was so freaking good that the M1 Air still somehow feels snappy for casual work to this day. Now, you might think I'm exaggerating, but ask anyone else with an M1 Air, and I bet they will tell you the same. So now, it really depends on the app you're using to absorb any sort of generational performance upgrades between the M2, M3, and the M4 chip. Uh, take Cinebench 2024, for example. It's a popular benchmarking tool that tells how well a machine performs under high CPU load. And here, the M2 Air was faster than the M1 by 9%. The M3 Air was faster than the M2 by 17%, and the M4 Air was faster than the M3 Air by 21% in single-core test. I also got a similar result in Geekbench 6's single-core CPU test as well. Which means if all you do is some light tasks, like, uh, web browsing, working with documents, handling emails and such, you are probably not going to notice much of a difference between all of them. Even in something like Speedometer 3.1, which measures how responsive web browsing feels, all of these MacBook Airs are pretty close to one another. Um, yeah. I did occasionally see how the M1 Air would take a moment longer to finish some task, like unzipping a file or launching an app, but I wouldn't call that a deal breaker in any way. But if you're a programmer or someone who's just getting into 3D work, or if you do a lot of photo and video editing, then trust me when I say that you'll definitely love the beefy multi-core upgrade of the M4 chip. Since now, it has a 10-core CPU with two extra efficiency cores, compared to the 8-core CPU setup on the rest of the gang. The M2 and M3 Airs are closely tied once again, and I'm super impressed to see just how much of a lead the M4 Air managed to take. This was also immediately clear when I ran Puget Ventures' test of video editing applications, like Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, which evaluates how well a system handles 4K or 8K media files across different codecs. Likewise, when it comes to GPU performance, the main thing you need to know is that in the base variants of the M2, M3, and M4 chips, you get an 8-core GPU, whereas the M1 only has a 7-core GPU. So, 
It's obvious that the oldest M1 MacBook Air falls behind by a significant margin in GPU-based tests, while the M2, M3, and M4 MacBook Airs are actually quite close in basic GPU computations and rasterized performance. And it's only once that I switched to applications with ray tracing or other complex shading and rendering techniques that the redesigned GPU architecture of the M3 and the M4 chip really started to flex its muscle. For example, the M3 Air was 25% faster than the M2 Air when rendering an animation on Blender, but 10% slower versus the M4 Air. And I know you're probably not thinking about gaming when looking to buy a MacBook, but the M4 Air also delivers smoother gameplay with higher FPS numbers in demanding AAA titles like Resident Evil 4. Alright, other than raw performance alone, I found the M4 Air to be a big winner in terms of thermals and power efficiency, too, at least when putting it next to the M3 Air. Yes, both of them are 3NM chips, unlike the 5NM based M1 and M2 chips. But what you might not have known is that Apple went with TSMC's enhanced N3E process for the M4, which has better efficiency and performance than M3's M3B process. And be it in Geekbench or multi-core CPU test on Cinebench, I noticed that the M4 Air had the lowest CPU temperature, compared to how the M3 Air ran the hottest in both of the tests. I was even surprised to find the M4 Air sipping the least amount of power in that Geekbench run, which goes on to show just how impressive Apple's M4 chip is. The thermals and power draw of the M3 and M4 MacBook Air's GPU are also pretty comparable in light workloads, although they tend to sip more power and get hotter in more demanding workloads. The M4 Air even boasts a much faster neural engine for all sorts of AI works. Uh, Apple says the M4's neural engine is more than two times faster compared to M3 and three times faster than M1's neural engine. But, um, even though I am seeing a big performance gap between all of them in benchmarks like Geekbench AI, the M4 Air wasn't that fast when I tried running DeepSeek's R1 model locally on these MacBook Airs. Okay, so that was a lot of talk about the performance. So now let's talk about one of my favorite things about MacBooks, their designs. And here, the M2 Air, the M3 Air, and the M4 Air all look the same. Whereas you get the classic tapered look on the M1 Air. And one of the upgrades we get on the new M4 Air is that Apple has upgraded both the USB-C connections to Thunderbolt 4 interface now. Instead of the older Thunderbolt 3 standard on the other older MacBook Airs, so Thunderbolt 4 means I can finally connect up to two 6K, 60Hz external displays here. You can technically hook up the M3 Air to two external monitors as well, although it will not work unless you close the MacBook's lid, which is pretty weird. Uh. Whereas the M1 and M2 Airs only let you connect one external display at a time. And there's another sneaky upgrade if you look into their webcam. So while Apple started using a sharper 1080p camera for better video calls with the M2 Air, the M4 Air builds on that by adding two new useful features this time. Number 1. Center Stage. Which keeps me in the frame even as I move around. And number 2. It also supports something called Desk View, where you can show an overhead view of your desk while FaceTiming someone. Okay. So when it comes to things like the keyboard and the trackpad, Apple hasn't really tried to change what works. The only difference is that Apple decided to use full height function keys starting with the M2 MacBook Air. Although the typing experience for me hasn't changed a bit, not at all. Uh, I still love how smooth and comfortable it feels to type on these keys, whereas Apple's large haptic trackpads continues to be the industry's benchmark for the best trackpad on a laptop. The speakers also get an upgrade coming from the M1 to M2 Air in terms of how loud they get and how clear they sound. 
but I'm little disappointed to see that the M3 and the M4 Air carry the same four-speaker sound system as the M2 Air, and nothing more than that. Even the display is the exact same between the M2, M3 and M4 MacBook Air. Uh, compared to the M1 Air, Apple trimmed down the bezels a little, added a notch for the webcam, and upped the brightness from 400 nits to 500 nits. But other than this, you're looking at a 13-inch IPS display with a 60 Hz refresh rate and almost pitch-perfect color accuracy on all four of these laptops. Since they all literally cover 100% of sRGB and nearly 100% of the P3 color gamut, making them perfect for any sort of color-sensitive work. I also found the battery situation on all of these MacBook Airs to be quite similar. Uh, the M1 Air does have the smallest battery out of them all, and the M4 Air's got the biggest one. Although if you look at Apple's official numbers, every single one of them is rated for 15 hours of web browsing over Wi-Fi. So I ran a simple test where I played a local 4K video file for a couple of hours to see how much juice they lost, and just look at this. I kept them all at 200 nits of brightness and 50% volume. But if you've got a slightly deeper pocket, I really believe that the M2 Air is going to be the best bang for your buck in 2025, cause it's got double the memory. A noticeable performance jump and an upgraded design and so much more. The only downside of the M2 Air is the storage speed since it uses a single NAND chip with slower read and write speeds. Although you're probably not going to notice it in casual day-to-day -day work. But when it comes to the M3 Air, I think you should skip this one because it's priced so close to the much better M4 Air right now. The M4 Air has got a better processor, a better webcam and some other sweet upgrades for just 10,000 price difference. Alright, everybody. So that was all for our in-depth comparison between all of the MacBook Airs that you can buy in 2025. Which one would you go for? Do let us know in the comments below, and if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching.